Hi, here's how I afford the things that I want. The following are the points that I strictly adhere by, which would benefit you if you take them into consideration. When it comes to affording the things that I want, the first point that I adhere by is that if I can't afford to pay it in full, then I can't afford it at all. I've talked about the different types of savings that I have. And when it comes to the purchases of the things that I like to buy, that's where my planned funds come in. Let's take a car, for example. Say that the car you want is 1.2 million pesos. And saktong sakto, you already have 1.2 million pesos in your bank. So can you afford it? You're probably thinking, well, yes. Diba, you said if you can't pay it in full, then you can't afford it at all. Yeah, but there are still other things to consider. Like, how are you going to pay your rent for that month? How are you going to feed yourself? How are you going to tend to your basic needs? I generally don't like to go into debt just to purchase the things that I want, which is why I don't actually use credit cards for these type of transactions. However, there are also other things to consider besides affording for the full amount. So basically, I know I can afford to buy something if not only can I pay for it in full because all of the money that I need is already in my planned savings and my emergency funds are established, but also before I buy anything, especially a gadget, I make sure that I can afford to pay for replacement parts, maintenance, and whatever accessories needed in order to either amplify the product's performance, protect it, or whatever else makes its useful life even more useful to me. An example of this would be when I buy a new phone or a new laptop, for example. I have to keep in mind that besides the fact that I'm going to need a tempered glass and a cell phone case, I also have to make sure that I'll be able to afford the battery replacement. Why? Because batteries are consumable. After a certain amount of time, especially with a certain amount of charge cycles, your battery starts to degrade and can't hold the same amount of power as it once used to, which would then affect the performance of your gadget. And this is why it's a factor also that I consider when I buy the things that I want. So a rundown of this would be, I can afford to buy something if I can afford to pay for it in full without having to touch my emergency savings or my free-to-spend fund. So I'm able to meet all of my financial obligations still. And at the same time, I am able to afford the accessories and the repairs and maintenance if need be. Second point to consider is, there is no instant gratification over here. Whenever I set my sights on something, I never buy it right away. This is not only helpful to make sure that I am able to establish the planned funds needed in order to buy that item, but also it's to make sure that I actually need or want that item. Sometimes in the heat of the moment and with how great marketing teams can be, you will feel a burning desire to get what is being sold to you. However, sometimes you buy it and then you realize you didn't actually need it at all. It doesn't actually make you happy and it only contributed to the clutter in your house, which you're then going to try to force yourself to use kasi binili mo yan at pinaghirapan mo. This is why it helps to delay your instant gratification. Think it through first. Do you really need this? And when you can afford it already, Another point to consider is, is this exactly what I want or is it something else? Which leads us into point number three, make a wish list. Okay, so whenever I go through a cycle of needing to buy things, I make a list on my phone called things to buy. I'll use an example of the recent purchases that I have made to help illustrate what exactly a things to buy list does and how it comes hand in hand with my wish list. At the start of this year, I decided to drink more water, for example. So in my buy list, I put buy a water container. Prior to this year also, I needed a new phone because my old one was 
lagging and it wasn't even picking up signal anymore, especially when I'd be out to far-flung areas. I mean, yes, there wouldn't be signal there, but my old phone's performance just degraded to the point that I'm not really receiving text messages or calls anymore, especially not in a timely manner. And then I had also put that I needed a laptop. So those are the things that I put in my things to buy list. I think another thing that I also put in my things to buy list was, oh yeah, I wanted new lip tint. After a few weeks passed by, I realized out of all the things that I listed there, it was the lip tint that didn't really stay on my mind. I mean, I already had lip tint. I was just thinking, oh, maybe this time I should buy something that's pink. The other three, from the water container to the phone to the laptop, ended up constantly staying on my mind. And I later on realized that I actually needed this to work or function optimally. So, because it wasn't just a passing fancy kumbaga, I transferred this onto my wish list. Now, what a wish list is, is basically a compilation of the specific things that I would like to buy with an accompanying budget of the suggested retail price and a status on whether I bought it or not. Included in there would be my discounts column, the amount that I paid for, including for shipping, and the link that shows me where exactly I found the product. Building up the wish list takes a bit of time because you're going to have to do research first. For example, when it came to the water bottle, I was actually just thinking of buying whatever I could find in SM. But after using my friend's Hydro Flask and realizing, oh, well, this helps me drink more water. The specifics of what I ended up putting on my wish list was a Hydro Flask that was 40 ounces. Same thing when I also decided to get some earphones. Initially, I wanted to get the AirPods Pro because I really do listen to a lot of audio per day, 6 to 10 hours per day, and having a wire makes things less convenient for me, especially when I need to charge my phone. But then after more research, I realized, oh, perhaps I'd be better off with over-the-ear headphones since the thing that's been causing me discomfort all the time is having to plug in earphones. Then I did more research. What are the best? consumer headphones that are available in the market today. And initially, the answer that everybody's going to give is the Sony XM4, or the answer that the majority are going to give. Then I dug deeper into it and realized comfort is king for me in this aspect. And so I ended up purchasing a Bose Quiet Comfort headphone set. So this is basically the point of the wish list is to really specify and to really make you think of what exactly it is that you need based on your individual case. Because what may work well for me may not work well for you and vice versa. What may work well for those that are recommending a certain product or service may not be what actually works well for you. And the final point of how I afford the things I want is that there is no shortcut. I work until I can afford the things that I need or want, which means that probably within one month, I still wouldn't be able to buy it. However, I work until I can cover all the costs, not just the upfront one, or I work until I can cover almost all the costs. And from my net home pay, I take out chunks for my different forms of savings and my investments. And slowly, as I build up the saving assigned to help me afford what I want, I'll end up with the amount that I need. But there's also something else that I like to do. So the benefit of not giving in to instant gratification or the benefit of actually planning out the savings is that you can take the full suggested retail price of whatever it is that you want to buy. For example, for me, I wanted to buy five items which totaled to 40000 plus. And then I realized, oh, there's Lazada's birthday sale coming up. And so what I did was I waited exactly for the birthday sale to come. I had like over 40000 ready. And by the time the birthday sale had come, I had collected vouchers from 
Globe because I'm a postpaid customer, um, Lazada and the like, wherever I could collect vouchers, I, I did it. And so pair that with the actual discounted prices on the birthday sale. By the time that I checked out all five items that I wanted to buy, I paid 19000 in total. <laughs> I'm so proud. If you would like to make the little system I created work for you, then you simply take all the things that you're going to need or want to buy that aren't exactly immediate that you have to buy it within the day already without thinking about it. And then take the time to research and feel it out. Like, do you actually need this? And what are the specifics of the product or the service that you would actually need? From there, list it all down. Create the budget, the projected budget, and save up to pay for everything in full retail price. If you can wait enough for a sale season to come by, go ahead. I personally find satisfaction in saving money while shopping. Then you can update the list to your liking, take or remove whatever you feel like you need to take or remove. So basically what this promotes is consciousness and mindfulness so that the decisions that you inevitably make when you spend your hard work cash are decisions that are well made. If you would like to make this little system that I created work for you, you can start by making an overall compilation of the things that you need or want, but it's not yet within your immediate budget because it doesn't fall within your day-to-day -day needs. How I did this was I would make a rough list. For example, I would put in phone, laptop, water container, headphones, and then as the days go by, I would then do my research on what devices or what products would be the best for me and my individual needs. And after I was able to specify that, immediately I put it into my wish list. Now, the wish list is a compilation of things that you're going to have to budget for, that you wish you could have, and you will make your wishes come true. I really like to buy things on sale, just because it makes sense to me. Unless, of course, it's urgent and I need it now, then I would buy it regardless of whether it's on sale or not. And that's how it works. That's how my things to buy and wish list system works. If I find that after a while, whatever I put in my things to buy list, for example, isn't really something that has stayed in my mind, I don't anymore bother putting it in my wish list. Sometimes I will put specific items on my things to buy list. And if I find that I have forgotten it after a bit, then I don't anymore bother putting it in the wish list. I made my wish list by opening up a blank workbook on Microsoft Excel. And then from there, I inputted the values that you're basically going to see in this spreadsheet. So the first column or column A is where I like to put the sale seasons that I'm planning to plot certain items on. The very first table though that I always have for the wish list that I make is the throughout insert year here table. So for this case, it's throughout the 2021 table and this is the items that I buy regardless of sale season. Column B houses the specific items that I would like to buy followed by its full suggested price and any of the discounts that I accumulated either through promotions, vouchers, or coins collected or other in-store discounts. And then I also account for the addition of the shipping fee and other costs that may go into buying the item, such as customs fees. Then we've got the purchase price, which is inclusive of discounts and all the other fees that have to be paid. After that, I like to put in a status bar, which turns green if I've bought the item and I input that, or stays red if the item hasn't been bought yet and is still pending. Then the last two columns are dedicated to the exact link or store where I found the item and the date that I've purchased the item. 
At the very bottom of my wish list is also what I like to call the pending pile, which is basically where certain purchases that have been on my mind now for a few months, which I'm really planning to buy, but I haven't yet specified what exactly it is that I'm going to buy for that particular item goes. And that's how I stay prepared. I watch out for the overall budget that I'm going to have to prepare. And then if I can time it on a sale season, even better so that there are savings. I hope you found this insightful and if you did, feel free to like and share it. Till next time. Woo! Second one down.